Let's get started. So I'm gonna go over the agenda real quick just so you have an idea of what we're what you're in for for the rest of the week. I'm gonna start off with some kind of the higher overview stuff, what are risk assessments, how we do risk assessments, why we do risk assessments, and then I'm gonna jump into really the whole methodology and touch on each piece of our understanding of the how to estimate loss of life. Um, so that you can turn around and do a workshop this afternoon and apply those those basic concepts. And then the rest of the week is all about going into detail on each one of the aspects, individual aspects of that methodology and, and really pr putting a lot more uh, meat on the bones there. <clears throat> so tomorrow or this afternoon we'll hear um, from Woody and Stephanie on structure inventories, how to develop structure inventories, and then also understand the stability criteria for buildings. We'll hear from um, Corby tomorrow on the hydraulic inputs. And then I'll talk about the warning and protective action initiation. It's really that the warning timeline and the, the information we have on understanding why people do what they do during uh, an emergency. Woody will talk a little bit about life sim. So we're not, this, this class isn't focused on life sim. It's focused on the methodology that's built into life sim, but um, we're not going to teach you how to use life sim but he'll he'll just give you an overview we do have a life sim course coming up next month in portland so if you're interested you can sign up for that as well um then stephanie will talk about uncertainty and then i'll be back tomorrow afternoon to talk about um, life sim validation and really what we're saying here is we have this method that we have applied in a simulation model like life sim and it's really detailed and we're modeling people moving around and the interaction with the flood and the first thing you should say is does that make sense there's no way you guys are getting all that right in this tool um, so we'll show you some efforts we've done against historic events to see how well uh, life sim does and then day three a lot of that will be from jesse how you walk through understanding results from a consequence assessment we'll talk about indirect life loss um, and then some economic damages, and then a little bit of other things, um, kind of how to use this in the planning context, as well as working with local emergency managers, which is one of the um, things that we're really pushing. You go through all this effort to understand a, a, a major event. You're talking to emergency managers. We need to <clears throat> do a better job of that interaction and, and providing the information we have. Um, and then sprinkled throughout all of this will be some case histories. So. We're going to walk through, I think there's a total of, I don't know, 12, 14 case histories and just talk about a specific historic event, what happened, and really focusing on the, on the consequences and why loss of life occurred or didn't um, for these historic events. So that's the agenda. <clears throat> All right, so let's jump into it. So why am I here? Why are we doing this? So working for the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, Dam and levee safety programs, we have a rather large inventory, 900 plus dams um, and 15,000 miles of levees. And we need to be smart about how we invest in that infrastructure. And so what we do is follow a risk-informed process where life safety is paramount. So what we had to do is for each of these structures, we need to go in and do, we've decided we're going to do risk assessments. Um, and prioritize our efforts based on those risk assessments. But as you can imagine, you can see this, there's, there's a lot of diversity in, in those levees and dams. Um, <clears throat> so here's some of the difference between those. Um, just some comparison of what, how they're built, um, how many people they protect. You're going to hear a lot of people talk about dams and levees and protecting people. We get a little nervous using that word. Um, Really, it's reducing risk, not necessarily protecting, talking to the public. You don't want to give them this idea that they're uh, fully protected. But you can see there's a, how many people are behind those property at risk, the, the length, average age. Um, and then that last piece there is actually one of the bigger differences when it comes to dams and levees. When we talk about dams being designed to pass extreme flows, right? All of our dams have spillways that are, that are supposed to pass that really large flood event. Levees, once you get to overtopping on most of our levees, it's kind of hands off. We don't know what's gonna happen, but they're probably gonna breach somewhere. So that's the biggest difference is just being designed for those major flood events to pass them safely. 
So you can see that play out in our risk assessments. Um, so what you see here is what we call an FN plot, um, where you on the y-axis you have the probability of failure, so in any given year the likelihood of uh, dam or levee failing, and then the associated consequences. And in this case, it's the loss of life that would be associated with that failure. Um, so each one of those dots on the left represents one of our dams. Each one of the dots on the right represents one of our levees. Like I said, we've done a risk assessment of some level uh, for every single dam and levee in our portfolio. And this is what it's starting to look like. Um, and again, on the right, you can see them all bunched up a little bit higher because it, it goes back to that design concept I talked about and not being designed to pass those extreme events. So as soon as you start seeing your levees over top, that's when you start to see failure. And that's, that's why they're all bunched up there. Because we don't have a lot of 10,000 year levees. Most of them are around the 100, 500, maybe 1,000 years is what their uh, design level. So <clears throat> if you're seeing risk assessments, if you're working on risk assessments, start getting comfortable with these kind of charts because this is how we like to, to show our, our risk assessment results. And there's a lot of uh, benefits of that and I'll get into it. Um, one of the other things we get in trouble with talking with our sponsors, we spend a lot of time with sponsors and we keep talking about risk and uh, here's the likelihood of your levees failing and here's what you should be doing to fix it. And they get really uncomfortable and annoyed with us for talking about risk all the time instead of saying, hey, by the way, here's all the benefits, all that work you're doing, the taxes that you're collecting and all the maintenance you're doing. There's actually a lot of benefits associated with this levy. So let's start with the, hey, here's the benefits and then here's some risks that we should be aware of. So you can see how the core does this idea of benefits is um, flood damages reduced. So every year we report to Congress how many flood damages our uh, dams and levees have prevented. So 2011, anybody know what happened in 2011 that led to a lot of damages prevented? And damages? Yeah. So there's a huge flooding all along the Mississippi River. Um, 2017, so the, there was a lot of the hurricanes, right? Harvey, uh, Maria, and then also a lot of flooding out in California. So that was when Oroville Dam uh, happened. So this is, it's another important thing of doing risk assessments. You gotta also understand the benefits and, and be able to communicate those benefits. Okay, <clears throat> so when it comes to our overall risk assessment approach that we've been doing in the RMC um, probably now for almost 15 years. Um, and this is for our, to support our entire dam and levee safety programs. This is kind of some of the, the factors that we've noticed, noticed. When it comes to the strengths of our approaches and how we do our risk assessments, uh, we have a lot of really nice tools. And you'll hear LifeSim is one of those. Um, Woody's done a great job developing it. It's, it's cool. It's a great tool. Um, we're pretty consistent with how we approach our risk assessments, and we've learned a lot. We, when you go through a risk assessment, how many of you have sat through a risk assessment for a dam or a levy? Okay, so you've gone through a potential failure modes analysis. You've sat around and talked about the likelihoods of different things happening. You learn a lot in that process that, that's really helpful. Um, Starting to get some really good graphics and visualizations and, and rather good at adapting to different situations. Weaknesses, and you're going to hear this a lot this week. Um, we got these great tools and we got a bunch of people that like to sit down and push the buttons and create these great graphics. But the most important part of that is being able to then sit down and explain why those results make sense. Uh, talk about the uncertainties about them and talk about, well, the the tool is limited in this manner, um, and this is why it might not give us the, exactly the answers we need, right? So that's the piece, that's why you're all sitting here, is so when you go to the consequences, and you do risk assessment and you're sitting around talking about consequences, and you want to deliver that to the to leadership or the decision makers, they start asking you questions about, well, why does that make sense? That seems like a really high loss of life, can you explain to me? It's being able to make the case for those assessments that really matter. Um, and doing so in English, not just talking to, in many cases, other engineers using all the jargon. Um, and, and being able to pull out the important story 
Don't give me a 400 page report. Give me the stuff that matters up front. Um, okay, so for consequence estimates, so we use them for risk informed decision making like you saw in those charts, helps us prioritize and not only which structures we need to focus on, but also talk about, all right, what should we do at a given structure to do, what kind of measures should we implement for that risk reduction? Uh, communicating with the leadership regarding the value, back to those benefits of our infrastructure. Um, talking with the sponsors, and this is where we've been challenged the most and where we're spending a lot of effort trying to get better is being able to interact with the, the sponsors, the people that maintain the levies um, that are in our program, but being able to, to talk with them about the benefits and actions they should be taking and why, that's, that's difficult. Um, and that's something where the, the consequence part of this is one thing that they, it's a lot easier for, for most people to grasp. Um, so that's a, it's a good way to, to get in the door and start having those conversations. Um, and then a big one is interacting with the emergency management agencies. We'll talk about this more tomorrow, but the warnings, how warnings go out, how people respond to the warnings, being able to talk about some, some inundation maps and show, hey, here's what we think might happen when you're sitting with emergency managers. That's the kind of information they want. Um, we have all this research, we do all this work, we need to be sharing it with them. Um, and it also helps for operations during flood, right? If you have understanding of the potential consequences, you can make a little bit smarter decisions during a flood event. Uh, for example, and you'll hear more of this from Stephanie, this whole idea of stability criteria. What, kind, what kinds of depths and velocities are needed to wash a car off of a road? Oh, we have a good understanding of that. We got all these maps of the potential, in, potential inundation. So now we have a web server that says, okay, here's what we think is going to happen in terms of flooding. Here's when we think you can and, and can't pass certain roads. That kind of stuff starts to become very helpful. Okay, so in summary, um, and this is within the core, we're doing risk assessments to help inform about $500 million worth of investment back into our infrastructure. That's significant, right? Um, that's why our agency, the Corps, over the last 10 years has said, you know what, we're using life loss estimates to inform this. We better know what we're talking about. And that's why Woody and I exist in, in the roles we have. They don't exist in a lot of other agencies. And we put a, the Corps has put a lot of money into understanding potential loss of life. Um, so there's, there's been some major advancements there that we're going to share with you this week. Um, so <clears throat> that's, that's really the, uh, the biggest takeaway is the importance of what we're doing here. Um, not only in talking with the emergency managers and the public, but making smart investment decisions. Um, and that last one, risk management involves consequence management. It's a big piece of the puzzle. We need to do a good job of it.